And then you sent your son, Jesus Christ. Everybody say, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, you sent Jesus, your only begotten son, to become man, to become incarnate of a virgin. He, he lived among us. He loved among us. He did all these incredible things. He walked on the water. He multiplied bread. He did all these great miracles. But the greatest thing he did for us is the cross. Yes. It is your cross, Lord God, that is the crowning gem of all that you have done, that you died for us so that that relationship that was messed up, that we broke through our sin and disobedience so that that can be restored. By the blood of the Lamb, we've been restored back to the Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And on that cross, you breathed your last, Lord God. You died and you were buried, but the grave couldn't hold you. I said, the grave couldn't hold you. And on the third day, you busted out of that tomb. You stepped out in freedom. And you showed us that sin, death, and Satan does not have the final end. But you, Lord, you are victorious. And after that, you ascended to the right hand of the Father, and you are there right now. There is a man in heaven, a God-man, a body next to the Father, Father, doing one thing and one thing only, interceding for us. We thank you for your intercession from heaven. I thank you, Jesus, that every time we call upon your name, you send your spirit. So I ask, Lord, that you send forth your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit of freedom and fire to burn within us, to make us become fully alive. We pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We praise you. Go ahead and have a seat. Woo! Just thought I'd open up with the gospel. Nothing better than the gospel. There is absolutely nothing better than the gospel. So coming in, I was, I was just kind of praying about the well on the ride over. And I was praying about the well. And the Lord said this. He said about all of you. He said about the well that they are the ones on the wood. They are the ones on the wood. And I said, what do you mean by that, Lord Jesus? What do you mean they are the ones on the wood? And I was reminded of the early church. Now, apostolic times, the Christians weren't cozy like we are today. No, no. Apostolic times, they were persecuted and they were torched. That early Christians were crucified and were put, they were like street lanterns, lanterns in the street. They were crucified and burning on a wood to be a torch for people to walk through the town. And he said, Though, that's what I mean. They are the ones on the wood. They are the ones that are willing to lay down their lives to be put on a cross and set ablaze so that the world can see this Jesus is real. They are the ones on the wood. We need more Christians obsessed about the blood and the cross of Jesus Christ. Ones who are willing to hang on a tree, be set ablaze, and to be a witness in this world that is so dark. Amen? Amen. So, two things. Become friends with the fire and cling, with the cling to the cross. Repeat after me. Become friends with the fire and cling to the cross. You know, all of us, we always call when we're worshiping, we're like, fire, fire, fire. But when the fire of the Holy Spirit comes, most of us run. We're like, ah, what? And you sense this purifying effect from the fire. And we're so afraid of the fire. And we're like, Lord, I don't want the fire. I want the dove. <laughs> right? Isn't that right? I mean, most of us are like, uh, no on the fire thing. That's, that's hot. That's, that's not, no, that burns. I would rather have the gentle little dove that rested upon Jesus after his baptism. But here's the thing. Jesus gets the dove. We get the fire. Jesus is the spotless lamb of God. He needs no fire. You with me? We need the fire. We've got things that need to be purified. We need the fire. Say, I need the fire. I need the fire. Jesus got the dove. We get the fire. And we need the fire. I needed the fire. Because the fire of zeal, the fire of zeal bursts forth from the fire of freedom. That when you have been set free, when that purifying fire of the Holy Spirit sets you free from addiction, whatever it is you're struggling with, from that freedom comes the fire of zeal. You want the zeal, 
but you can't bypass the purifying fire of God because that, that right there is going to give you the zeal. When you realize you've been delivered, set free from sin and you're now free, that's going to propel you out into mission. For me, I had three times in my life I'm, I'm zealous for the Lord because I've been delivered so much. And he keeps doing it. I love it. I, I drank at an early age and I've been delivered of alcoholism. Thank you, Jesus. I got caught into addiction with pornography and all that other stuff. Delivered from that. Thank you, Jesus. I got caught up in a tattoo addiction. Delivered from that. Anything else you want to deliver me from, Lord? You see, but that's the thing. is People are like, I want that fire, but you don't know my story. You don't know what I've been freed from. When you get to know that, you're like, oh, that's right. What the gospel said is true. He who has been forgiven much loves much, right? The reason I'm on fire is because I was so broken, and God loved me in my brokenness. In my surrender, there was a spark. In every surrender, there's a spark. We need to realize this is that submission comes before mission. Submission comes before mission. Submission to the wood and the fire. Submission comes before mission. And in order for the wood to die, it needs to be, for it to burn, it needs to be dead. We need people, we need Christians that are truly dead to self and alive from God. We want the fire, I want the fire, I want the fire, but I'm asking, where's the wood? Where's the dead wood? Where's the surrendered ones? Where are the submitted ones of Jesus? The submitted. Some people don't like that word, but you need to get what that word means. In Latin, it's submissio, under mission, under the same mission. We need Christians that are under the mission of Jesus Christ. Not in your own mission. We need a bride that is fully submitted to God. One who is willing to lay down their lives fully for the king. One who is submitted. We have right now, what I'm sensing in a lot of Christian denominations and stuff, we have prideful brides. We have a lot of prideful brides out here. And I'm telling you, brides, we need to be humble. We need to be the lowly ones. Okay? Brides that walk around saying, I'm a beloved son. I'm a beloved daughter. Look at me. Look at me. I'm so good. No, 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 no. The reason why you're so white is because he's so bright. Amen. It's not about you. It's time to die to self. And so on the car ride over, I'm asking, Lord, how do you want me to kill them? <laughs> I know it sounds really bad. It sounds really bad. But he said to exalt the cross and he said, release the seraphim. I was like, what are you talking about? Release the seraphim. And he said, yes, I want you to drop off a package of seraphim angels, a bunch of fiery friends that are coming from the altar of heaven to have friendship with you in your little prayer closet, in your room. God is inviting you to start hanging out with seraphim angels. Seraphim angels are the purifying angels. They're the purifying angels. So there's nine choirs of angels and they are at the top because they are the closest to God. They're the closest to the altar, and the altar is so hot, they are flames. Seraph means fiery. They're the fiery ones. They're the purifying ones, and God wants you and me to pucker up and be purified with these seraphim angels. They are called to be sent from the altar to you to expose darkness and hidden sin. We want the ministering angels that Jesus got, you know, in the agony. We want all these little kind and gentle angels. But no one out there is, is asking for the seraphim to come down because there's a certain fear. Do, do not fear the seraphim. They are here to purify you, to make you precious gold. If you want to be golden, if you want to shine like the light of Christ, you need the burning fire of the seraphim in your life. Who's hanging out with angels in their closet? Anybody? Yeah? No? Let's get back into it, church. Let's get back into it. Hang out with the seraphim. Look at the light of them. Now, there's, there's a, a story in the, um, the Old Testament, and it's Moses in the desert. And it, he didn't... So, I don't know if you know the story, but it's, it's in Numbers. I do believe it's Numbers. Well, they, they were disobedience disobedient to God, and God sent seraph serpents. Do you remember that? Fiery serpents to bite them, and many died. Many died. 
And, and, and we read that reading, we're like, that's bad, that's no good. But I'm here to tell you, it is good. They needed to die. They needed to die to complaining, disobedience, rebellion, selfishness, so that they can realize their weakness and then look to the pole, the one on the cross, Jesus Christ. Welcome the seraphim. Welcome the seraphim. There's two, two things I want to encourage each, all of us to do is to begin a relationship with the seraphim and then also Our Lady of Sorrows. Today we celebrate Our Lady of Sorrows. Both of them will help you see the weaknesses, the broken cracks in your wall that you need repairing so that the enemy can't sneak in and take advantage of you. Are you with me? Ask them to show you your hidden faults so that you can die to self and rise with the Lord. Because it says in, the, in Mark's Gospel, it says, for those who want to save their lives, they will lose it. But those who lose their life for my sake and for the gospel, they will save it. And we have a church that are clinging on to different worldly things. And the Lord is saying, let go. Let go of these things. Let go. Your whole life, our whole life is a life of stripping. So that all that's left is us and the cross. Christ shows us this perfect example. His whole life he gave, he gave, he gave until he was on the cross. He was stripped. He had nothing else. All he had was his mother and he gave his mother away. And let, lastly, all he, have is, all he has is his breath. And what did he do in the end? He gave up his breath too. Our whole lives, we need to be stripping ourselves. We need to be one with the cross. We need to be the crucified ones. St. Paul says this, I've been crucified with Christ and it's no longer I who live, but it is who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself up for me. It's time, it's time that we became bankrupt of self so that we can become rich in God. It's time that we empty ourselves. Listen, listen, if, if, if all you have is nothing but God, then you have everything. If you've got nothing else but God, you have everything. But if, there, if you have something other than God, then it can be taken away. If you're clinging on to things of this world, then it can be taken away. If you cling on to other things other than God, then you leave yourself exposed for the devil to do three things with you. To steal, kill, and destroy. If you're holding on to things, he will steal it, he will kill it, and he will destroy it. But if all you have is God, then the devil ain't going to be able to impact you. You've got nothing for him to steal, kill, or destroy. There's a man named Eric Gilmore, and he, he did a talk not long ago, and he spoke about being childlike. And he joked around, he said, uh, he, he's got a couple little girls and stuff, and he went up to one of the, his little girls and pretended to be a burglar. You know, it was just like, and he ran up, he goes, give me all your money. And she looked at him and goes, daddy, I don't have any money. <laughs> the thief, if he comes to you and says, give me this, and you've got nothing but Christ, then you won't be impacted. <laughs> Let go of everything so that all you have left is Christ. Be a child, be dependent, be honest, be lowly, be lowly, and let the fire be your friend and cling to the cross. Are you close to the cross? Or have you distanced yourself? The thing with the cross is that the cross cuts. That when you get close and you put it on your shoulders and you begin to touch it with your hands, you begin to get slivers. It's painful. And if you're in a relationship with Christ, you are bound to leave with some slivers. If you're close enough to Christ, then in the you're going to kiss the cross in the closet until you come out with a mouthful of slivers. And that's a good thing because it's easy to fast when you have a mouthful of slivers, right? <laughs> I actually uh, just preached on that today about like kissing the cross to the point where you have a mouthful of slivers. And this one woman from my parish said, this is easy. I'm not hungry at all because my mouth is hurting. I keep kissing the cross. Are you kissing the cross? Are you fellowshipping with the cross? Are you letting the cross cut you and cut off those things that are not of God so that you can be completely bankrupt of self, independent and full of God. The cross is the key 
to life in the Spirit. Without the cross, you cannot live a life in the Spirit. One of the uh, most famous passages in the Bible when it comes to the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is Romans chapter 8. Can I read a little bit to you? Romans chapter 8, verse 11, one, 11 through 16. Listen up. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, say in me, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the Spirit that dwells in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, but if you, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. If you've got something, if you're clinging on to the world, that will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, and you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption when we cry, It is the very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, provided, provided we suffer with Him. We miss that. We're like, life in the Spirit, yeah, yeah, life in the Spirit, yeah, yeah. But we're like, what about the fellowshipping with this suffering that Philippians speaks about? If you want power, you've got to fellowship with this suffering as well, provided we suffer with Him so that we may also be glorified with Him. The cross is the key to life in the Spirit. Don't miss the key. If you don't, if you don't got the key, you can't get through the door. Our inheritance has a hinge. It's the cross. And when you go through the door, the cross, you enter into your inheritance. We need a church that clings to the cross, not to our cell phone. We need a church that clings to the cross, not to alcohol, drugs, addictions, whatever it might be. We need a church that clings to the cross. When you accept the cross... You are opening a doorway for heaven and the angels to ascend and descend upon you and your community. Don't look at the door. Open the door and go through it and let angels come down with it. Come to the cross. Cling to the cross and let the fire of God fire and purify you and make you new. I want to end with just an image that I was praying with on the ride over. And the image was a large cross. And on one side of the cross was Jesus, and on the other side was Brian. And I saw you both with your heads on the cross. And around you were a multitude of people surrounded around the cross. Each one of you were touching the cross with your hand, desiring the cross with your hand. And every time you touched the cross, your hand turned red. And the Lord said, they're getting close enough to get cut and to experience the blood of Christ and they will leave the cross and bring blood prints into their community. Blood prints. Blood prints. If you do not touch the cross and cling to the cross, then how are you going to bring blood prints into your community? How are you going to bring power, purity, and deliverance to those you love. Do not despise the cross. Do not curse the cross. Kiss the cross. Come to the cross and invite the fire of God in your life. Amen? Amen. 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 If you want the fire of God in your life, raise your hand. If you want a fellowship with, with the cross, raise your hand. Come on. It goes hand in hand. The fire and the wood go one together. And so, Lord Jesus, I ask that everybody who's got their hand up right now, that you pour out your fire, that you send a special seraph angel to them, to be with them, and to bite out anything that is not of you so that they can look more like you. Purify your bride, Lord Jesus. May we be a bride obsessed with your cross and being one with you. We invite your presence, Holy Spirit, come and have your way. Come, fill each one of us, Lord, with your presence. We love you and we adore you, Jesus, for by your cross you have 
change the world. We love you, Lord. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to invite people up. If you want, if you want to receive prayer, are we going to do prayer? Is that okay? I know that was kind of short. Was that short? That was short. That was cool. I don't know. All I got to say is, is, is fellowship with the seraphim and embrace the cross. This is what's going to change the world. This is what's going to turn heads. Is people that aren't afraid to burn for Christ, to be upon the wood and be a lantern for the, the world to see the light of Christ. Amen. Yeah. I think we should do some. Yeah, we'll do some prayer. Yeah, okay. I want to speak. I want to speak a couple more words about the seraph. And it was interesting because Father came, and I don't know how the topic came up, but before he even told me about what the topic he was talking about was, I mentioned the seraph angels. Yeah. And. So it's just a sign that the Lord wanted you to encounter the seraph angels mm -hmm. tonight. And yeah. I began to tell Father Adam some stories about my time in ministry and how I actually have a devotion to the seraph angels mm -hmm. and how I partner with the angels. I partner with the seraph angels yeah. many, many times when I pray and I see the fire of God come people by just partnering with the Seraph Angels. Mm -hmm. And so I want to just share a couple of those testimonies just to increase your faith. Mm -hmm. And so, and then we'll pray. Yeah. So, uh, so one time I was ministering in this, uh, I was ministering with Encounter Ministries up over in Indianapolis. And uh, it was a healing service in this uh the first three people that came up to my line, I prayed for them and absolutely nothing happened to them. You know, it's kind of like, okay, God, I need you. <laughs> I need you to show up. Uh, why is nothing happening? Why is it that nobody's getting healed? I'm talking like not even going down to point one and they're pain level. You know, I'm just going, Lord, I need you. What should I do? And I, I started to cry out to the Lord, Lord, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? And he said, hold on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So so I did I just made like this totally crazy man. I go, fire the Lord come down upon you right now. And this lady, I go, did, and I looked at her and I go, did, did anything happen? It was like Anything going on? She said, no. Absolutely not. And I'm like, oh man, God, this is the greatest thing. And she's just staring at me like I'm totally crazy, you know. And uh, this lady, she was like two people back in, uh, in the rows, and she comes up and she's shaking like this. She's going uncontrollable shaking, and I go, oh. What's going on? What what happened? And she goes, when you called down fire from heaven, I just felt this fire hit my feet and it just went whoosh right up through me. And I can't stop shaking right yeah. now. What am I supposed to do? Yes. Um, I, I just go, well, uh, why don't you just take your hand and put it on this lady and pray that she gets healed and see what happens. And she prayed for that lady and she got healed instantly on the spot. Yes. And then every single person after that, I just had that lady praying over people all yeah. night, and every single person that that lady prayed with got healed. Yeah. And I know it was the Seraph Angels. I know, because like I said, I partner with the Seraph Angels all the time when I do ministry, uh, because I know the power of the fire right. that they carry. And uh, I'll just end with this. St. Francis, we, we talked about St. Francis. We admire St. Francis so much because more so than any saint, we would probably say that he was conformed to Christ crucified, right? Mm. So much so that he was the first saint that we know of that uh, bore the wounds of Christ that had the stigma. Right. I mean, he actually had the nails sticking through his mm. hands, bent over on the other side. And... When, when he received the stigmata, he was up on Mount Alberto, and he prayed uh, for two things. He said, Lord, I want to know what it was like, uh, how much you suffered for sinners. How much you, you, your heart just broke for sinners. And I believe the other 
Uh, do, do you remember what the, I'm sorry, do you remember what the other thing was? And the love to be able to bear. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened was a seraph angel appeared in the form of the crucified Christ. And St. Francis went into a trance. And when he came out of the trance, he had the wounds of Christ. And he bore those wounds the last two years of his life. And he suffered for... They would take St. Francis and they would put... He couldn't even walk. And they would take him on a donkey. And one... Just I'll end with this story. They put him in front of this priest who was known to be sinning and falling into a sinful life. And they just sat him in front of the priest's doorstep, knocked the door. He came out and saw St. Francis with the wounds of Christ. And he just fell to his knees and began to weep and wow. repented and changed his life. Yeah. This is the fire of God that Father Adam talked about. This is the fire that we need. We, we want to be conformed to Jesus crucified. And that can only happen through... Through the fire of God coming on, yeah. on us, like He said, partnering with the angels. Right. And we're going to do that tonight. We're going yeah. to. Uh, it might get a little. It might look kind of crazy. It might. You might even be screaming like, "No, no, Lord, I can't take any more. Like I'm going to die." But I'm telling you to have courage. Yeah. Receive the fire. And there will be people changed. There will be people walking out of this place made new, made holy, being purified, it just takes one encounter. So we want to pray for that. So uh, I think the way we'll do this is we clear out a spot in the back. We start to maybe if those last three rows, if we could take the chairs, if it's okay, and just 